Hi, this is Greg Benz with another Luminosity Masking Tutorial. In this video, I want to re revisit this image of this slot canyon in Page, Arizona with this darker exposure and this lighter exposure, which we will combine using manual exposure blending. Uh, however, I want to show the new split screen masking function in Lumenzio version 1.6. This is going to let us see the mask and the image at the exact same time, which is just a really nice way to work more quickly and precisely with luminosity masks. So you can just see exactly what's going on in the image. So first, let's just get these images stacked together for blending. I'm going to click on the pre-blend function. It's going to automatically load them, layer them, stack them, and sort them in order for us, and then give us an option here on whether we want to uh, save any changes on the original source documents or just simply discard them or if we want we can just keep them open. In this case I'm just going to close them without saving any changes. So we have our blended image, uh, retains all the XMP data and is uh, ready to go. One quick little thing here, do you see some transparent pixels on the edge? I'm simply going to trim those away here. So image, trim, Photoshop will automatically get rid of those unused pixels on the edge. So just a nice way to quickly clean it up without having to bother with the crop tool. So just like in the previous edit, I want to use this darker exposure for our luminosity mask. And I'll show why here by shift clicking on the mask that disables this mask uh, essentially as if it wasn't here. So we can see this layer. The lighter areas of this image are very cleanly separated from the darker areas above it here. So this is just going to be a better basis of a mask than this one where there's just a little bit less difference between the two. So just like I did before, I'm going to click on a lights two. Again, you can see a really nice selection of the transition areas with essentially no selection of the rock overhang other than a little bit over here, but that's very easy for us to deal with. And I'm just going to load that up as a selection and we can paint with white paint through that selection onto our luminosity mask here and, th and that are onto our mask and that allow us to start blending these layers. So I'm going to do that by clicking B for brush. I've got white painted loaded up and now to see both the mask and the image at the same time I'm going to click on split in Lumenzia and it's going to give me this dual view. It looks like there's two images, but it's the exact same image just shown two different ways. Up top is this mask and on bottom we're seeing the actual combined image. So as we paint, both of these are going to change and probably easiest if I just start to show you, I'm going to start painting white through our luminosity selection. Um, and now that you've got a sense of where it is, I'm going to hit Command H to hide the marching ants. So the selection is still active, we just can't see it. But you can already see that this mask is starting to bring back in some of that detail. So I'm going to continue to paint a few different times here on the transition areas. I want to make sure that the transition edges look really good because that's the hard part. You really can't freehand those areas in any easy way, but with a luminosity mask, you're really just kind of you know bowling with bumpers, if you will, to bring in that detail. I'm gonna bring a little bit here just so I can kind of see where I am, but in a second, we'll uh, freehand paint that area in. So at this point, we've got a really nice transition between these images. It looks really good in the transition areas. We can see uh, kind of a before and after here how that's brought that detail back. I'm going to alt click on the mask here to see this again. Whatever uh, of these two windows you have selected, you can see the title is lit. So if I'm down here, this is lit. That's going to be where any sort of changes I make occur. So if I alt click the mask, it's going to show in that window. So I'm just simply going to leave this up here, but I could work in, in either way. So I've got my transition zones looking pretty good. At this point, I want to get rid of the selection or, or just deselect it by hitting Command D because I want to start freehand painting now. And basically what I'm doing is just I want to bring in this foreground. And you can see that I'm not seeing the changes down below until I let go. So at the end of every brush stroke, that's when Photoshop will update from one window to the next. So, you know, a couple quick brush strokes and let go is a nice way to continuously see what's going on. but 
I just want to get this filled in here so that the, the main foreground is really just using that darker exposure. And now I can figure out what I, how far I want to push into the transition zones. These areas that are really black here are going to be areas where I can bring up more contrast by freehand painting. You can see that darkness starts to come through. And again, I'll do this over here. And when I let go, you can see that starts to come through. So I do want to make sure that some of these key areas here are painted in. And so I'm just looking for where there's these black areas. And if I have pure white, then I'm bringing through the entire image intact. And that's going to keep the contrast as opposed to having mixed black and white, which is going to blend the images and reduce the contrast. So that's one reason why being able to see the mask and the image at the same time is so nice. You can see where you need to work by looking at the mask, but you can see what you're doing by looking down at the image here. And at this point, I think we've already got a really nice blend that I think looks great. I could continue working on this a little more if I wanted to. Um, may take the opacity down a little bit and just kind of start to mm -hmm. feather in a few of these areas over here a little bit more. But I think that looks great. So uh, now that we're set on this, we can simply close this view by clicking the X. You can close either of them. It doesn't really matter when you close all of them, you're closing the document. When you just close one, you're just closing that view. So our blend, we've gone from here to here looks really nice a couple finishing steps that i would use here i'm going to load up my lasso and i want to select an area that i want to vignette so i'm just going to kind of highlight kind of roughly speaking this area that i want to highlight in the image hit vignette and may try and dial that up a little bit so i'm going to increase the opacity of my vignette layer and i want to bring a little bit more detail out of it so i'm going to click on sharpen and this is going to do a high pass sharpening effect. You don't want to overdo it, but this is an image that can probably take a little bit more. So I'm going to push it up a bit and we can kind of see the live preview, how far we're, we're getting with this. And if you want to, you may want to uh, hit command plus to zoom in and spacebar to give the hand to move around just so you can kind of compare. If you want to see less, you can drag to the left and more drag to the right. So, starting to get some artifact if I push that too far. So I'm gonna go with about that amount of sharpening there at four. And let's zoom this back. And just kind of looking at this from start to finish, we had this original image that was exposed for the shadow areas. We blended in these darker areas. And in fact, I can see now I actually uh, forgot to get this bottom piece. So let's go ahead and finish that up. So if I hit split, I can again see my mask and I see my mistake here. I'm gonna use the hand to move around. If you have scroll all windows checked with the hand, then when you move one window, the other moves with it. And so uh, there was just a little bit that was off the bottom that I had forgotten to fix. So I'm gonna hit my brush again and just simply paint that in. And we'll see that foreground there looks much better now. So that's properly blended. So I think that looks good and with that, uh, we'll call that done. So that was just about a four minute edit to blend, sharpen, and vignette the image and just add a lot of dramatic effect to it. Um, the uh, split screen functionality, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, I'll send, spend a second now just to show you a couple things about it. Um, it is uh, kind of a, an interesting uh, setup here. So let's click on the split and we can see we split from top to bottom by default because this is a wide image so that's the best way to display these i'm going to close one by hitting uh, command w to close that one window and instead this time i want to alt click on split and you'll see that we get an alternative view left to right so lamenti is going to pick the best orientation for you but you can always reverse it if you want to and if you're going to edit the whole image then probably the default's the best but if you want to zoom in to some area for detail then you may want to reverse that. So it's always your choice. The other thing you'll see when you hover over the split screen here are a couple comments. One about using that hand tool with the scroll of windows that I mentioned, and the other that you can hold down control and command to sync zoom. So what does that mean? Well, let's say we wanted to get really precise in editing this ridge here. 
um, right in here. So because this is the window that's selected, when I hit Command Plus, it's going to zoom in. And I can hold down the space bar to get the hand and move over. And I want to see this part here. But this window isn't showing me that. Now I could leave it if I want to see the whole image. But if I want this to mirror this, I can hold down Command or Control, click Split, and it's going to match the positioning and the zoom. And in fact, if I go back to the hand here using the space bar or H, as I move around the image, they're going to move in lockstep. The only thing you would ever have to uh, click on Split again would be if I somehow change the zoom setting, then just simply Command click on Split and you're back there. So you can always quickly and easily move around and if I want to start brushing on this you can see this extra level of detail just very quickly shows me exactly what's going on so I really love this new feature it saves me a lot of time just really helps me see what's going on with the mask so I can find out where to paint as well as seeing the image so I can understand exactly how these things are interacting once I start painting on them so I hope you enjoyed that and uh, please leave me some comments and feedback with your thoughts and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more tutorials like this. Thanks.